So it's important that our fundamental truths should not be compromised, the principles and values of the organization. The values about the fact that we must be hardworking. We can't be a lazy ANC Youth League. We must be honest to the revolution. We can't be a, a, a youth league that is dishonest to its own revolution, to its own members. We, we must be, you know, we must be loyal to it. So these are the values that we espouse. And some of the leaders of the ANC Youth League have actually uh, demonstrated in many ways, the founding fathers of this August moment, the ANC Youth League, have demonstrated in many ways that they were hardworking, that they were honest to the revolution, that they could, the sacrifice to the revolution was something that is a non-negotiable to them. And I think the generation of today has got to actually learn a lot from many, many leaders of the ANC Youth League. So the values and principles of an organization are a software of that organization. And if you look at the discourse today, we are being attacked at that particular level. When the movement in general, the ANC, the Youth League is being attacked today, it is because we are seen to be weak when it comes to the organizational software. We are seen as pe people who are unprincipled. We are seen as people who are not hardworking, who are lazy. We want things to come to ourselves. We are seen as corrupt. Uh, uh, organization. So the, hard, the organization is being attacked at the hardware level. And it is upon us, it is upon you, the generation of today, that must ensure that we reclaim this, the principle, the software of the ANC Youth League. I get run the eldership, that's what you call us. And we, I, I, I personally accept that. I don't, I don't take that as an offense. Now, comrades, if we are to build the NC Youth League, these are some of the things that we must focus on. I've heard many of young people talking about factional discipline. It's a very problematic conceptualization of renewal. When there's a lobby group towards a conference, after the conference, that lobby group must disengage so that it does not graduate into a faction. Because factions, I always say factions, factions, they are never enough. They are like a net, an empty bowel. You can pour water in them, they are never enough, they are never satisfied. Tomorrow they want this, tomorrow they want that. And if we're going to elect leadership, we're going to renew and rebuild the African National Congress Youth League on the premise of factions, you must never, that is not, re, that is not rebuilding. What Gramsci talks about that for the new to be there, the old must die. It will actually happen. But Gramsci must always be contextualized. It is possible. It is possible that the old can die and, and the new will always be born. You know when a cow dies here, an old cow dies here on the floor, that carcass, with time you'll see a new life out of that carcass being born. A life of what? Of worms, of maggots. That is new life. But when you come closer to that carcass, it stinks. Those new life, that new life of maggots, of those worms, represent the state of decay. So you can go to a conference and produce a new leadership. But if that leadership is not in a state of political readiness, it will be a leadership, a new leadership of young people that will represent the state of decay of the movement. So when we say for the new to be born, the old must die, we're not talking about that state of newness. We're talking about something fundamentally different. And that is why we say Gramsci has got to be contextualized in this instance. So we want to believe that we want to, we'll, we'll, we'll play our little role to contribute towards renewal of the African National Congress Youth League. But you must understand, we're not about, we're not about saying no, the old must die only. We want to ensure that young people, they also tap into the wisdom of the African National Congress. How can you have an old organization like the youth, like the ANC, whose youth cannot tap into the wisdom of the old? That is our political, that is our historical, that is undialectical. So, uh, 
These are areas that I believe we need to focus on. We have seen frustrations of many young people outside here calling for the disbandment of the NYTT. From the inception, some of us have always maintained a view that uh, the creation of the NYTT is not a perfect decision, but it is the best decision under the circumstances and the wisdom of the NEC. But we have gone through that, and we are aware that uh, Many young people were not happy, uh, they still are not happy with that. We have tried to do our best to do some work, we have tried to visit uh, the provinces and so on to try and revive structures of the ANC. Comrades, we, there was no way that uh, we could come to such a great moment. There was no way that uh, we could summon the whole country virtually and otherwise to such an auspicious occasion without uh, our leaders. Right now, I would like to call the Treasurer General of the ANC, Comrade Paul Mashatile. I don't want to regurgitate his profile. We know him from the youth movement. We know him from UDF. We know him from the PWV area. We know that uh, the strides he has made as the chairperson of Houghton, you know, for many, many years. We know he's, uh, we have seen his marks all over this province as an MEC for safety, MEC for uh, agriculture, economic development, and of course, as the premier of this country, as the deputy chairperson. So his profile is quite, uh, will take over this, uh, uh, it's quite long, but he's one of us, his uh, comrade Paul Mashatile, this podium is yours, talk to young people, they want to hear you as we face uh, this, this celebration. Engos, Titi. <laughs> Introduction. Uh, he said something very interesting. He said uh, he, he wants to uh, thank me and introduce me as uh, the premier of this country. <laughs> uh, I thought uh, Comrade Design wanted me as a premier of Hawaii. Uh, but thank you very much, uh, uh, members of the ANC National Youth Cast Team the provincial, regional, and branch structures of the ANC UCLIC, leadership and membership of SASCO, COSAS, the Young Communist League, and the Progressive Youth Alliance, the young people of our country, comrades and compatriots. On this day, 76 years ago, a group of young people in their mid-20s to early 30s gathered at the Bantu Men Social Club in Johannesburg and brought to life a youth movement that was to become a powerful force behind the African National Congress. On this day, we are celebrating more than seven decades of militant, informed and disciplined struggles of the ANC Youth League to champion the interest of young people. Comrades, it was 
at the December 1943 meeting of the ANC in Bloemfontein, that youth leaders of the Congress movement put forward a proposal that stated, and I quote, henceforth it shall be competent for the African youth to organize and establish provincial conferences of the youth league with a view of forming a national congress of the youth league immediately. Close quote. This heralded the birth of the ANC youth league whose 75th anniversary we are celebrating today. The birth of this giant organization of young people was a watershed moment in the history of our country. It was also a defining moment, a landmark, a turning point and a historic milestone in the South African struggle for national liberation. Throughout history, The, the, throughout history, the Congress Youth League has been able to mobilize and organize young people into potent force for change. The essence of what the AC Youth League was captured by former President Mandela in his address to the annual conference of the Youth League in December 1951, when he said the following, as the guardian of African nationalism, the Congress Youth League is the greatest hope that the African people and indeed all oppressed people have that they will never, that they will ever live in a free, independent, united, democratic and prosperous South Africa. The Congress and the Youth League are the instruments through which these aims will be achieved. Those codes. So comrades, on this special occasion, as we walk down memory lane, tracing the history of this vibrant, militant, and disciplined youth movement of the ANC, it is fitting that we pay tribute to its founding members. They include, amongst others, Oliver Tambo, Nelson Mandela, Walter Sisulu, A. Pinda, Anton Lembete, Ntolise Majombozi, Dan Thome, Jordan Gubete, William Como, David Popate, and many uh, other young people. We also pay tribute to the successive generation of leaders who guided the youth league through its more than seven decades of existence. Many of these leaders went on to become leaders as well as heroes and heroines in the broader national struggle for liberation. They include young lions of the caliber of J.P. Sinevi, Peter Mukaba Paksma and Kathale, Ephraim Mohali, Simpuen Chinkuru, Emma Sate, Hestan Zabupati, Ephraim Mkwe, Bongani Kumalo, and many others who today serve in our MEC and in our uh, various structures of our government. Many of these comrades took over the baton of struggle from those who founded the ANC Youth League in 1944. We also remember the many youth congresses that continued to mobilize young people at a time when the liberation movement was banned. The youth congresses were an integral part of the broad ensemble of progressive formations that led the final push towards the demise of apartheid. I'm referring here to militant formations such as the West, Western Cape Youth Congress, which was the first youth congress to be formed in 1983, the Port Elizabeth Youth Congress, the Utenage Youth Congress, the Soweto Youth Congress, the Alexander Youth Congress, and many others. Also on this day, we remember proudly those millions of cadres who over the years made up the membership of the ANC Youth League. They were the bodies and soul and lifeblood of the organization. They too played an integral part in our national struggle for liberation. Also on this occasion, 
We recall the Youth League Manifesto adopted in 1944. Amongst others, the Youth League Manifesto asserted profoundly that the conflict in South Africa was fundamentally a racial one between whites and blacks, who represented opposite political and philosoph philosophical poles. The oppressors, it asserted, who were whites, represented a philosophy of personal achievement and individualism that fueled fierce competition. On the other hand, the oppressed Africans embodied a philosophy of communalism and societal harmony where society's needs were favored over those of an individual. The manifesto contended that because whites had defined their domination in terms of race, this had led the African to, to view his problems and those of his country through the perspective of race. The manifesto was also critical of the belief that by some ANC leaders, especially the elders, that change could come through compromise and accommodation. The youth leaders of the time charged that senior ANC leaders had grown remote and aloof from the African community. They were trapped between their apprehensions of losing the few privileges that the government has handed them. They had qualms over mass African protests aimed at being, bringing down the wrath of the government. The manifesto concluded that the result of all of this was that ANC leaders had become suspicious of progressive form inspired the struggles to build the Africa we want, the Africa and South Africa of our dreams. We also recall another young man, who ate the cost of our history as the African people. And one of them was the Native Union and secondly, the regeneration of Africa. These seminal works of SEME gave momentum to the formation of the South African National Native Congress, which later became known as the African National Congress. Ixlikai Sakasema's message made more than a century ago still remains relevant today. In the same vein, it was the youth of the 1940s, the youth we are called commemorating today who changed the course of the liberation struggle by calling for radical methods of struggle against the apartheid. Equally, we continue to pay tribute to the youth of now their bravery and divine spirit. With their bare hands, they face the mind of the apartheid police, demanding an end to the these young people took, took their destiny in their hands. They changed the course of history. We will never forget the contribution of the young people settlement to end apartheid oppression. We also acknowledge the contribution of many young white South Africans who in the 1970s and the 1980s took part in the anti-conscription anti campaign and joined the of student movements. They too took their destiny in their own hands and changed the course of history. In the past few years, we have seen, especially in the Middle East and the North Africa, that it was young people who sparked and led what became known as the Arab Spring. It is also, it is also young people who are leading the global Black uh, Lives Matter movement. Also in our country, it was the young people who led the Rose Must Fall movement and also Peace Must Fall movement. I'm raising all of these comrades 
to highlight the power of young people to bring about progressive change. It is this inherent power of young people, their energy and enthusiasm that gives us hope that the future of our country and our movement, the African National Congress, will be better than it has been in the past. As we have now entered the second and more radical phase of our ongoing struggle toward the National Democratic Society, we look up to young people, organized under the banner of the ANC Youth League, to be among the leading forces that drive the national efforts to advance radical socioeconomic transformation. In calling our young people to action, let us recall the wise words of Anton Lembeto, when he said the following, and I quote, we are not called to peace, comfort, and enjoyment, but to hard work, struggle, and sweat. We need young men and women of high moral stamina and integrity, of courage and vision. In short, we need warriors. This means we need to develop a new type of youth of stoical discipline, trained to endure suffering and difficulty. It is only this type of youth that will achieve the national liberation of the African people, close quote. So comrades, on this special occasion of the 75th anniversary of the ANC Youth League, we call on the current generation of young people to take over the baton of struggle from those brave young people that came before them. The ANC Youth League in particular of efforts to renew and unite the ANC. True comrades, and as we have learned from history, the renewal of the ANC will not happen without a vibrant ANC Youth League. Like the youth of the 1940s, youth leaders of today must infuse a new spirit in the African National Congress. At all times, young people must ensure that the ANC does not grow remote and aloof from the people. Young people must dedicate their energy towards building a strong ANC that places people first. The Youth League must be unrelenting in driving the program of restoring the values or restoring the ANC to its historic values that have kept it alive for more than 108 years. The values of hard work, of unity, of selflessness and sacrifice, values of accountability, democratic debate, criticism, and self criticism. Young people of the ANC must help in restoring. The revolutionary morality of our movement to fight corruption and to build an ethical AMC. The youth league must continue to serve as a vehicle for young people to play their full transformative role in the political life and leadership structures of our movement. We also look up to the AMC youth league to mobilize all of society in the fight against gender based violence femicide, the abuse of women and children. Let the young people of today declare boldly that they are the generation that will put an end to the scourge of gender-based violence. Part of our response to gender-based violence must also be the urgent need to fast-track the economic empowerment of, youth, of women and young girls. Young people organized under the banner of the AEC Youth League must be at the forefront and at the cutting edge of the ongoing fights against racism and all its manifestation in our country. Once again, the young people of today must declare boldly that they are the generation that will put an end to racism and all its manifestation. It also remains the task of the ANC Youth League to mobilize and organize young people of South Africa in the broadest and most inclusive fashion. Indeed, the prominent voice and the processes of the ANC Youth League is required in all corners of our country and everywhere 
where young people are gathered. The ANC Youth League must be a home for professional young people, young people, young people at schools and also universities, young people in sports, as well as young people in places of worship. Indeed, the ANC Youth League must be everywhere. The youth league must also strengthen the alliance with progressive youth formations such as COSA, SASCO, and the Young Communist League. Comrades, one of the pressing and immediate challenges of our time is our response to COVID-19 and the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. The pandemic has taken a heavy toll on human life. Many young people have been at the forefront in the fight against the pandemic. Uh, most of us with people who are prepared to risk their own lives also across the second quarter GDP numbers. And they show that our economy is run by a massive 51% on a single life basis. We want to applaud our government for putting in place measures to curb the spread of coronavirus. These measures have saved They have also prevented our country from having an out of control pandemic. Going forward, our task, which young people must play an important role in, is to ensure that our economy recovers and that it is reconstructed. As the ANC, we are mobilizing all stakeholders in building a new fast growth investment of South Africa. We are prioritizing climate resilience industrialization through localization, transformation, mass job creation, particularly for young people, support for small businesses, cooperatives, and the informal sector. Equally, we continue to promote the objective of broad-based black economic empowerment, as well as greater integration into the African continent, taking advantage of the Africa Free Trade Agreement. The successes of the economic recovery and reconstruction effort will depend on, amongst others, the following, maintaining government spending while redirecting it towards critical programs for economic and social development, effective resource mobilization, including crowding in private sector investments in infrastructure delivery, as well as mobilizing the broader savings industry to invest in high impact development projects, ensuring more effective use of the credit guarantee scheme established with banks to promote growth and ensure business continuity as far as possible, and also building partnership across all sectors. Ultimately, our goal is not merely to return our economy to where it was before the coronavirus but to forge a new economy in a global, in, with taking into account the global development. Young people must be among the key drivers and beneficiaries of this new economy we are building. SMEs and cooperatives, especially those owned by women, youth and people with disabilities, must benefit from the massive infrastructure rollout that is an integral part of the economic recovery and reconstruction effort. Young people must be equipped with the skills required by our changing economy. We also need more young entrepreneurs to take advantage of opportunities presented by the new economy we are building today. Comrades, as we celebrate the 76th anniversary of the ANC Youth League, the task of rebuilding structures of the Youth League is more urgent than before. 
We need young people to be at the forefront of rebuilding the ANC youth and its structures. Young people must also lead efforts, as we said before, lead efforts towards the renewal of the ANC itself. And as I conclude, I want to wish once again, I, I wish once again to borrow from the words of President Mandela, who was also one of the founding members of the ANC when he said the following, the Congress is the greatest hope that the African people and all the first people have that they will ever live in a free, independent, united, democratic, and prosperous South Africa. The Congress and the Youth League are the instrument through which these aims will be achieved. Let the ANC Youth League continue to inspire hope among the young people of our country. Let it be an effective instrument for the total emancipation of the people of South Africa. I wish members of the ANC weekly a happy 76th anniversary. May this giant movement of young people grow lips and bounds. Uh, happy birthday, ANC weekly. Happy birthday. Let us now continue with the task of rebuilding the ANC weekly. Thank you very much, Commissioner. Thank you very much, uh, Comrade uh, Treasurer General of the ANC. And uh, thank you to every comrade that had tuned in today, young people who are eagerly waiting uh, to see the ANC Youth League rising, the ANC Youth League doing what it is supposed to do. We'll continue with the celebrations of the 76th uh, national, I mean, of the 76th uh, anniversary of the ANC. Youth League will go on throughout the month of uh, September in different provinces and in different oh, regions, no. oh, reviving right. and reviving and uh, making sure that the, the organization of uh, Peter Mukaba is indeed uh, revived, it is indeed rebuilt. We're going to continue with this debate of conceptualizing the rebuilding. What is it that uh, we want to rebuild? What is it that uh, we want to table as a program of action? So thank you very much comrades uh, for helping us as we celebrate the ANC Youth League. We're still going to continue to celebrate the ANC Youth League. And uh, we trust that other provinces, other regions will be holding their own anniversaries. Comrade Tichi, we thank you. And the members of the ANC that have tuned in here today, we thank you as the NYT team tasked with uh, a very serious uh, task of uh, uh, rebuilding and renewing the ANC Youth League. Uh, we hope that we'll be able to have a, finally the National Congress as soon as uh, everything is opened as soon as or maybe at, at level at level one of the lockdown and regulations allow us to hold a national congress. Young people, um, your ANC youth league is still there to solve uh, the challenges that were faced with as the youth league are not um, a fall of the ANC Youth League, like some would say that there's been a rise and there's been a fall of the Youth League, I will rise and will be able to give South Africans a true young, true youth politics and be able to mobilize all young people under the banner of the ANC continuing with comrades for logging in um, comrade Tandi Mahambe Shala uh, uh, comrade Pesani uh, NYTT members we thank you all members of the Youth League Provincial Secretaries and Chairs who have logged in and who have um, 
been following the anniversary as it goes on. Thank you very much, Kota. Wait, oh. Wait, wait.